always had a passion for history, sacred sites of the world, and the people who call these places home. Join me as we take a tour through time and discover what healing powers, secrets, and legends these sites and the land they're built on contain. Travels. I'm your hostess Joanna and in this series we have the ultimate pleasure of discovering mystical and spiritual sites in our region. I can't wait to show you what I've discovered. Today we have the ultimate joy, at least on my behalf, of visiting the Sanctuaire Notre-Dame des Lourdes in Rigaud, Quebec. An absolutely gorgeous spot and tranquil sanctuary just to find your peace. Stay tuned, I can't wait to show you around. This series um, that I've been doing has turned out remarkably different than what I had planned. Of course, this is always the way, right? We always have these big plans and then things turn out miraculously different and I'm glad they did. So I just want to share with you a little bit about the magic of this place. Every time I come here, as you can see, there's a beautiful shard of light just behind me there. This is really what it's all about. Um, I feel the presence of fairies here, I feel the presence of all of the past people who have had a hand in creating the culture here in this area of Quebec. I feel the energy of the trees, I feel the energy of the people who have lived uh, before, who have come before us, the ancestors and the spirit of nature but mostly the spirit of I would say Mother Mary and a lot of the benevolent helpers that help us along our, our journeys. And to come here is really like stepping out of time. I feel that time legitimately stops when you're here. And um, there's been times when I've come here and it feels like an hour has gone by and it's really been, you know, two or three time seems to pass in a flash and there's some really curious things that happen and some miraculous healing vibes that happen here as well. I've had so many miracles that have happened to me following my visit here and I'm lucky that it's close enough to home that I can come anytime I want and I'm so glad for that because it really is a magical place where prayers are answered and I can't quite explain the peace and the magic that is encompassed in this land but safe to say that it's a very powerful place to manifest to find your spirit to boost your intuition to get answers and if you're a history buff like me it's really an amazing place to learn about continuity i think that's the best thing i can say right now for me that i enjoy the most is just to be in the presence of spirit and all that is. It's a truly, truly, truly miraculous place. I really hope you get a chance to come and visit someday. I just want to let you know about some unexplainable, mysterious and little curious healings that happen here while you're on this, this pocket of land here in Rigo. Uh, every time I come here, I am simply amazed at the healing vibes that are coming from the earth, the prayers that are answered following my visits, and just the general hum and vibration of the trees and the nature around. It's really, really quite surprising to come here. It's um, something that you have to experience for yourself, <laughs> but uh, we're gonna go through some of the main areas today. Mother Mary's Grotto, we're going to go to the cross look out and we're also going to go to the field of potatoes what they call the champ de guerre or the champ de patate for those of you who don't speak french 
which has some pretty serious legends attached to it. So I can't wait to show you a little bit more. Established in 1874, this open-air sanctuary boasts flora, fauna, and a hint of everyday magic. Open from May until September, this place of peace is full of winding pathways to explore, observe, and be in nature. As it were, I happened to be at the sanctuary on a day when my prayers for help were answered with speed. With my battery dying, I found myself in somewhat of a pickle to plug in my device. Flustered, I ignored the choir that was present that Saturday morning, singing a hymn that I now remember in hindsight to be, It Will Be Okay. This was sign number one that Spirit was listening. Asking aloud for help to guide me with my project, I continued to walk along in search of an outlet, and lo and behold, I ran into the resident priest who introduced himself as Father Sukur, which means Father Help in English, he explained with a jovial laugh. After my initial shock of receiving the help I had asked for, I laughed, and then we laughed together. He led me to a power outlet on the grounds. This was sign number two, and I don't believe it was a coincidence. Continuing on with our tour here, I thought I'd give you a little bit of history of the land. Really, um, it's very ripe with um, the energy of the people that came before us. Uh, you have to understand that this area of Quebec was largely populated by obviously Native Indians, but uh, quite a few tribes of Native Indians who had a beautiful, beautiful culture. There's also the energy of the settlers, the English and the French. Um, a lot of people came from Scotland and Ireland. Um, and all of these cultures and traditions and energy are really woven into the fabric here of the land. Um, it's quite an interesting um, energy to experience when you're here just because a lot of these factions of people and different cultures had a hand in building this sanctuary and you can really feel the energy in the land of what happened here in the past as well uh, we know from the history of quebec obviously there was a lot of skirmishes and a lot of you know pioneers that came here to settle and in that uh, was quite a lot of um, I guess fighting in between um, these different uh, groups of people so you can feel that in this little parcel of land that's nestled you know in the midst of all of that you can really pick up on, on a lot of the land energy that still holds some of the you know history of our area and uh, it's really quite interesting to feel that rise up from underneath your feet and when you're here in this sanctuary um, as I've mentioned throughout the, the episode, you can really um, fully understand that this sanctuary is like a little parcel of peace <laughs> in the midst of all of that. Here I am at the top of the sanctuary, Notre Dame de Lourdes in Rigo, and this place is very encompassing and that you can see pretty much from the top the whole Glengarry Township, the Ottawa Valley, Grenville, La Chute, almost all the way to vaudreuil sous -Ange. so it's very ideally situated um, to be able to see the lay of the land and about I would say 45 minutes west of the city of Montreal uh, headed on the 40 towards Ottawa, you'll find this little pocket of, uh, of beauty and um, it really gives you a sense of being able to come back to yourself, a sense of your spirituality, a sense of all that is and really a good um, feeling of love as I mentioned uh, before, uh, love and acceptance and I don't know, you're in nature here and it's just um, feels so welcoming and all of the people I've run into here at the Sanctuaire have been nothing but uh, beautiful and benevolent. 
I just had the grace of running into the uh, priest who's here, whose father Secours, his name is Father Secours, and uh, for those of you who don't speak French, that means help in, uh, in English, so really aptly named priest, and he couldn't have been kinder. So really, everywhere I've turned uh, at this whole sanctuary that encompasses a boat, I would say two to three miles across, or maybe even four, in a complete outdoors. Uh, it's in complete outdoors. Um, it's really, everybody has been nothing but very, very kind, and I've felt so welcome here and so good while I've been visiting. Um, I will surely come back. Take a break from the ordinary as you climb to the top of the northern face of Morigo. Notre Dame de Lourdes Sanctuary space lends visitors a panoramic view as far as the eye can see. If you're looking for a fun activity to do with the family or with friends, this is a great idea with something for everyone. Winding up a rocky path at the top one can see for miles or perhaps even talk to God. Either way, make a wish. I'm confident the angels can hear you. It's certainly one of the best places to find your spirit, develop your intuition, get some moderate exercise, or see the sunset. Each and every time I come here, something miraculous happens. Mother Mary is said to have a nurturing and caring vibe, assisting those who may be struggling. Now here's a little tidbit from my own experience. Perhaps it's me using the power of intention, but I truly believe that this is a wonderfully powerful spot for prayer. Some of the times I can remember coming here to sit with her, I've been at a crossroads in my life and I've prayed for help and for guidance. Amazingly, each time my prayers have been answered, arriving usually within a week or so. It's truly phenomenal. Today, as I visited and spoke with her on a predominantly calm and windless day, a sudden breeze came out of nowhere. Is this a coincidence? So here I am near Mother Mary's prayer bench and um, as I was sitting here on the bench channeling some of the energy of Mother Mary's spirit and the benevolent beings that are located here in the sanctuary from the land and whatnot, I couldn't help but get an overwhelming sense of the need to forgive and I think that's the message that is offered today in the sanctuary and I'll pass it on to you all as well that life is just too short to hold on to things that uh, hurt us and uh, that have happened in the past. So Mother Mary's message uh, to me and to everybody watching is really to forgive. It's as simple as that. And I really believe that the more I'm here, the more I get a sense that the purpose of this land, this sanctuary, is for exactly that forgiveness. And uh, throughout history we've always had bad things and um, hard times but we've also had good mixed in as well of course and this is what the sanctuary means to me is that it's a beautiful spot of land of peace of love amidst you know the pain of being human sometimes there's always a respite from the storm and this is one of those parts Catholic or not, religious or not, um, there's lots of people that come here to do pilgrimages every year and I think that's the reason why is to find your spirit, to always come back to your heart, to always come back to your spirit. It knows the way and um, as soon as we follow it we have the answers we need. One thing I would mention coming here would be to bring a sturdy pair of running shoes or sneakers because it is on a mountainside just be warned and there's a lot of uphill as you can see behind me climbing up to the field of potatoes it's quite hilly so just be um, aware of that that it is on a mountainside and for those of you who have mobility issues there's still lots to do but um, be prepared to climb a little bit <laughs> as you can see there's beautifully paved paths uh, throughout the park but um, for sure it's a bit of a climb so you can get your exercise in for sure
So here I am in the famous field of potatoes, the champ de patates, like they say in French. And this area has quite a, hmm, how do I put this, um, few legends attached to it. Now, the locals will full on admit that they have no idea where all of these rocks have come from. So as you can see, there's miles upon miles, let's say probably about four or five miles wide of a field of potatoes, <laughs> rocks, um, that nothing grows underneath them. And these rocks have been here for quite a long time. Um, and the truth of the matter is, is that nobody really has a certain answer as to where they came from. So was it an abandoned riverbed, perhaps? Was it left over from the glaciers, perhaps? Some of the locals even uh, believe a legend that a farmer who was once in the area that was tilling the land on the Sabbath on the Sunday and God took his revenge and turned his crops to rocks. <laughs> um, there's also some people who believe that this is hollowed land that, um, you know, also they have heard some strange noises coming from this area in the middle of the night. Uh, nobody's quite sure exactly what is happening here, but safe to say is that it definitely has a certain energy here. And um, who knows? I don't know what the real answer is or how they came to be here, but it is something to come and see. So it's called the Champ des Patates, the Champ des Guerres. And um, as I mentioned, it's been here for quite a few centuries before the Sanctuaire Notre-Dame des Lourdes was even constructed. So that's before the 1870s. So these rocks have been here for quite some time. And maybe when you come and visit, you can uh, develop your own hypothesis. But those are some of the legends that are attached to this field. Who knows? little bit of history of the sanctuary. It really was the brainchild of a cleric named Luger Posey and he really had it in his heart to commission something that was reminiscent of the original Notre Dame de Lourdes sanctuary in France. He was so enamored with the story of the uh, miraculous apparitions of Mother Mary that he took it upon himself with some friends to create this beautiful sanctuary here in Quebec. And thank goodness he did. As previously mentioned, European settlers, fur traders, indigenous tribes, and American colonists all had a hand in developing the culture of the surrounding hills and likely passed this way at one point or another. Over the years, the sanctuaire has been refurbished and remodeled, but the true magic in the heart of the locale remains. Since then, people come from all over the world to experience the wonderful healing vibes, magic, and blessings that seem to emanate from the mountain, the streams, and the air nearby. If you're up for a short, moderately challenging, approximately 40-minute hike, you can climb to the top of the mountain to take in the view. Please be warned that this trail is fairly congested on weekends and holidays and uneven in certain spots. Extremely worth the effort to see. I especially recommend going in the fall when the leaves are changing. It's picturesque. Thanks for watching. Remember, magic and spirit are everywhere in the universe. If only we have the eyes to see it. Bye for now.